You all right? Uh, I've decided to grow my beard out a little bit because um, at certain gigs, I have been getting mistaken for Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> I see it in their eyes. <laughs> Fuck me, he's not doing stand-up now, is he? <laughs> Sometimes when I come out, I might open up with, this is a joke from Maureen from Chichester. <laughs> I love Jeremy, I love him. Uh, I think to myself, sometimes, when I'm in a dilemma, I think to myself, what would JC do? <laughs> I've got a dilemma at the moment. It's my son, my seven-year-old son. I love him, I love him, but, and I don't want to come across as intolerant, but I think my seven-year-old son might be middle class. <laughs> Me and his mum split up just after he was born. She ended up with a middle-class bloke. I ended up with a middle-class girlfriend. My girlfriend denies it. She says, I can't be middle-class. I have an allergic reaction to quinoa. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> but that's the atmosphere my son has to grow up in. So, my worry about him is that as he gets older, what if he chooses to be openly middle class? <laughs> like wearing hiking equipment to go to the shops. <laughs> Walking boots and a gilet. Where are you off to? You see, where I come from, people wear pyjamas to go to the shops. How's he meant to integrate? So, as a parent, I thought, I need to set some boundaries. So, I've set in some ground rules. I said to him, rule number one, no quinoa. Not in my house. Told him, I don't care what you call it, not under my roof. <laughs> Rule number two, no hummus. <laughs> now, I am aware that hummus has become more socially acceptable nowadays. <laughs> I see it as a gateway food. <laughs> First it's hummus, then it's couscous. Before you know it, you've got a fridge full of Rocket and Prosecco. <laughs> Not in my house. See, I come from a council estate in East Manchester called Hattersley. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. For those of you that haven't, Hattersley's famous for murderers and serial killers. In the 1980s, I lived opposite the house of the Moors murderers. Ian Brady and, and Myra Hindley. And our local doctor at that time was Harold Shipman. <laughs> How lucky was I? I'm sorry. How lucky was I? Thank you. To be that age at that time. Too late for Hindley. Too early for Shipman. Horrible time for me, the 80s, growing up in the 80s. Uh, my dog died. I remember, I mean, I'm not blaming Shipman for that, by the way. <laughs> that was definitely old age. He died in my arms at midnight. I remember my dad coming, shovel in one hand, black bin bag in the other. And we took Ben out back and buried him. And I'll never forget my father's words to me as we stood over Ben's grave. He said, Hush now, son. It's just a fucking dog. <laughs> I suppose burying a dead body directly opposite the Moore's murderer's house at midnight wasn't the most intelligent thing my dad's ever done. <laughs> police arrived about 10 minutes after, <laughs> wanting to know what's gone on. Well, I just pointed at my dad and said, 
Him. He's just buried my best friend. I think I'll finish with a joke. My son asked me the other day for some career advice. So I told him, Seoul's okay, but stay away from Pyongyang. Thank you very much. Nice one. <laughs>